Hello, and welcome. So, I've gone over this before, but I thought it was a good time to do a little refresher course on why armor is the thing that whenever we're talking about end game, late game enemies, what's like the most dangerous faction in the game, what is most powerful, what's most important, what builds are good, the meta in general, all these things surrounding like enemies and how we build our Warframes to counter them. Wonderful. Armor is a really central topic and I want to talk about its complete and utter dominance of Warframe because it is absolutely vast and there's a few there's only a few units that I'm going to talk about because they they represent kind of the like main I would say the main threats of any given faction that's two grenier units heavy gunners and bombards we run into them very often they have corrupted variants which are much stronger ancient healers from the infested faction there is a corrupted version of that that is slightly stronger. We run into those quite often. Uh, and then Corpus Tex from the Corpus side, that's generally the strongest unit on that end. Uh, we run into those in Corpus missions very, very often. And I, I would say that just from a stats perspective, uh, the Corpus Tech is probably the strongest non like manic tier unit uh, and by manic tier i mean things like bursa uh, which is kind of like an upper echelon of enemies you don't see a whole whole lot of uh, i'm more in the mid-range of like common heavy units those are the enemies we're going to be talking about and why ancient healers corpus techs those enemies essentially don't matter uh whenever you are building a weapon uh, and why heavy gunners and bombards are like the thing that we're always worried about. And in fact, any enemy that can scale with armor is what we're actually worried about uh, whenever we are trying to kill enemies in general. Obviously, there are some minor exceptions to that rule, but I would say for about, let's say, like 90% of the content in Warframe, we're building against armor, which is why... We have quite a few augments like Seeking Shuriken, which can completely strip armor, uh, which will go over what kind of like actual effective damage a mod like Seeking Shuriken has whenever it's modded like this, uh, which end is also why it is seen that corrosive projection is required in some cases. Uh, for example, and this is this is even true in non grenier missions in some cases. Uh, so. Corrosive projection in pretty much all, I'll say, all Grenier missions where, well, that's not really fair. LOR, Nightmare LOR, it's very common to have four corrosive projections. In the old Endless style of things where people were planning to go for, let's say, now let's say two and a half hours. Four corrosive projections is, like cataclysmic in its effect upon the enemies whenever you're running four of them to completely strip armor these effects are only so powerful and so important for countering the enemies because they are so absolutely absurd uh in that armor scale is out of control and an example of the time where you take curse projection even when you're not even fighting grenier is the jordist verdict raid uh, and even just the Jordis regular, like, star chart boss fight itself. Uh, there are a lot of parties that will just take four crows projections on just that normal-ass, not even, not even raid boss. Because even though he's one of the very few armored enemies in that mission, the armor makes such an incredible difference in the amount of health represented in that mission just at large. Like, in what you have to work towards to actually kill that enemy. That it is actually worth it as opposed to taking any or the, uh, any other aura in, let's say, again, 90% of cases. And that's a problem, I would say. Uh, personally, I would like to see armor definitely looked at, uh, because it is wildly inconsistent with the rest of, like, the enemy types that don't have armor in the game. But let's just, let's just cut right to showing, showing one thing. 
which is the heavy gunner. Oop. Yeah, we'll go with gunner. The heavy gunner, not the corrupted. The regular. Corrupted are even stronger than this, which is very important. Level 100. Oh, oh, that's the amount of them. Whoop. A level 140 heavy gunner. Now, I'm not going to tell you how much health this heavy gunner has until I've told you how much effective damage Seeking Shuriken does to this enemy. Nope, oh, doesn't go that far. Whoops. There we go. That did three and a half million effective hit points of damage, and then a little bit. Because that's how much the armor scaling is worth in EHP on this enemy. It, it is worth that absolutely insane amount. That did three and a half million, te granted temporary, obviously. Three and a half million damage, because this enemy has, there you go, you can see it on screen. This enemy scaled up to this, has those values which come out to that EHP. That is the reason why, why so much of the game revolves around armor. Because removing it is nutso. Absolutely nutso. Now let's compare. Let's compare with our Corpus tech, which I would say is pretty equivalent, like a pretty equivalent enemy. Uh, to the heavy gunner on the corpus side. This enemy, at face value, this guy, at level 140 also, he only has a little over double what the enemy I just took 3.5 million EHP off of has. And of course he does a lot of damage because he's level 140 and I'm an ash. I don't know why I'm not just doing my invisibility like I planned to. This, this enemy has about 200k EHP with their shields and their health. About 200k. Which is, like, not, like, terribly low. It's a level 140 enemy. 200k is eh, relatively significant. But comparing that to 3.5 million is, like... It's, just, it's not even... It's not even a contest. It's just crazy. Which is, which is why we don't see a lot of effects where you're stripping shields, and it's why we're not, like, so focused on magnetic damage. Which is widely considered to be pretty much useless, I'd say. It's just not a factor. Because this enemy, in comparison to the heavy gunner, doesn't matter at all. So, where does that leave ancient healers, who are even worse off? And they're... Uh, they're they only scale from health, which is reasonable, uh, because like that's the it's kind of the flesh class. Um, ancient healers only have about another forty k health on a heavy gunner with no armor, as their like total EHP, which is huge. And bombards are even worse, as you can see here. Bombards. Because Bombard's base level is lower than Heavy Gunner's, Bombard's at the same level 140 have an extra almost 1 million EHP because of their armor scaling. And of course their health scaling goes into that because those two things work together. That's absolutely crazy. And it, it's consistent across even lower levels. You don't have to be a, like obscenely high level like, I would say, even a level 140, there are a lot of players that may never even see, may never even see such an enemy. So here's the level 80 stats. And you might notice that there's a huge, huge disparity still. But what about a level 50? No, that doesn't... That still seems really fucked up, wouldn't you say? I mean... It might just be me, but I think that Heavy Gunner has over four times the EHP of the Ancient Healer and the Corpus Tech. That seems a little crazy. And it's obviously even worse for the Bombards. So, 
this is the reason. This is the video explaining why we're so focused on armor, why it is such a huge part of this game, and why people will, like for Seeking Shuriken, for example, like this augment is great. Why is this augment great? This augment doesn't even like really, it doesn't do like anything like super unique. It doesn't like super change the way Ash is played for a huge amount. Uh, the only thing it does is remove the most important thing in the game. Like, it's not even like a stellar effect. It's not like something like totally unique and a new way to play. You still throw your shuriken like you always do, but this is one of like, this is like regarded as like a fantastic, amazing augment uh, because it does so much with so very, very little. So yeah, I just wanted to, I wanted to take today to kind of like go over and remind people that hey, maybe, just maybe, it might not be super healthy for the game to have such a crazy wide disparity between like strong enemy types. All right, bombard. That's with corrosive damage. Which is not good against the type of armor that bombards have. But how how long does that take with radiation damage? Which is which is what they're weak to. Bombards are weak to radiation damage, which is very 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 important. Incredibly important. So the radiation damage, which is what they're weak to. Let's see just how long this takes. Remember, it took, like, pretty much my entire, like, set of rounds beforehand. Didn't die. Oh, shit. I'm gonna die. You can see it didn't- it did not take less shots there. Because it doesn't matter that he's not weak to corrosive. It doesn't matter at all. What matters is that he's got armor. Like, what damage types are good against armor don't really matter. You're only concerned about getting rid of armor. Which is, is why we have things like Seeking Sure can be considered so good, of course. Uh, because you can do things like this with viral damage. I kill him like that. that. That's utilizing armor stripping. For comparison's sake, let's use the same build against the same level of Ancient Healer. Which I would consider to be at like the same tier of unit. Huh. It just seems a little odd. Seems a little odd, that disparity. But yeah, just wanted to uh, remind everybody that that's, uh, that's why the Grenier are the strongest faction. And that's why they're the most dangerous faction. And that's why, holy shit, enemies need to be looked at.